Good day, guys. Today we're going to be installing the latest version of ArcOS onto our R36s using only our Android phone. There are a few requirements. Your Android device will need to support USB host, more commonly known as OTG or on the go. And you'll also need an external USB SD reader. Unfortunately, you cannot use the built-in SD reader in most Android devices. It just isn't recognized by the app we'll be using to write our images. You might also need an OTG adapter, something like this. I've got a USB-C one on the left and a micro USB one on the right. So you can connect your SD reader to your Android device. Also, before starting, double check you have a legit R36S handheld and not a clone, as the version of ArcOS we'll be using today will not work on the clone units. The steps are the same, and I will put a link to the specific build of ArcOS for clones down in the description below. So if you do have a clone, use that link instead of the standard ArcOS link. Let's get into it. To start off, we're just going to be inserting our stock micro SD card. This is the one that came with the handheld into our USB micro SD reader and we'll connect it to the phone. Once connected, you'll most likely need to go to settings to enable OTG. I've just opened up Android settings, gone to search at the top and typed in OTG. We've got OTG connection and we want to turn it on. If everything's working correctly, your phone might pop up asking if you want to open a file manager. For now, we'll cancel and just press home. We'll also need to download and install two Android apps. EdgeDroid and CX File Explorer. They are both free and available from the Android App Store, but you can also download and sideload it from your preferred site. This is EdgeDroid ISO to USB writer, and this is CX File Explorer. Any advanced file explorer should work. I just picked this one since it is free. With both of them downloaded and installed, we want to open up CX File Explorer. If your USB SD reader is connected and working correctly, you should see a boot folder. Tap on that. Unfortunately, Android does automatically generate all of these folders when connecting a USB device, so just ignore all them. And we want to scroll down all the way to the bottom where we should see our boot files. I recommend backing all of these up. So I can just hold down on one, press the square at the top to select everything, press copy, go back. I'll go to our downloads folder, nice and easy. I'll press the three dots at the very top right, go new, go folder. I'll call it R36S backup go into that folder and press paste. It shouldn't take too long to copy all the files over. You may get errors for folders that were created by Android. So for example, dot no media, just press okay. And if you scroll down, we should have our boot files and we do. We do this for two reasons. The first is if we can't get any screen panels working on our fresh Arc OS install, we can always use our stock files. And the second is we're going to be uploading one of these files to an online tool, which should hopefully tell us what screen panel we need. That's all we have to do with our stock SD card. So we can swipe down from the very top and tap to remove our USB device. With that done, we want to close our file manager. We want to open up Chrome. We want to navigate to the screen checker tool. I will link this down below in the description. Select choose file. And we want to navigate to our backup folder. It might be slightly different for you, but for me, I'll just tap my files, download, R36S backup, scroll all the way down. And we want to upload RK3326-R35S-Linux.DTB. Click add and click identify my screen. After waiting a second or two, scroll down to the very bottom of the page. And unfortunately it says the uploaded data does not match any pre-existing file. If it does say that, don't panic. It is just because this screen checking tool hasn't been updated in a while. So it doesn't have the hashes of the new screen revisions. In this case, we'll just start with panel four version five, since that seems to be the most common. If instead it says you have a clone, then you'll just need to download and install the custom build of ArcOS for clones instead. Again, I will have that linked down in the description below. Now we know what screen we have, we'll go to our ArcOS download page. I will have this link down in the description below. From here, just scroll down a little bit. And we should have the different screen panel types. We have the R36S, so this is the section we'll be focusing on. And since ours did say it couldn't detect the screen type, we'll start with panel 4 version 5, which is here. You'll notice there's three links, Google Drive, Mediafire, and Mega. All three links host the exact same file. So if Google Drive is giving you an error, won't let you download, just use Mediafire or Mega. I prefer Google Drive since it is slightly faster on my internet connection. So I'll just tap on Google Drive. I'll just open it in Chrome. You may get an error here, that's fine. Just click download and we'll just zoom in so you can read the text. It says the file's too big. So Google's built-in virus scanner can't scan it. That doesn't mean it's virused. It just means that Google won't scan it. We'll click download anyway, and it should start downloading. It may take a while to download, but once it's finished downloading, close off Google Chrome and we want to insert our fresh SD card into our USB reader. Don't reuse the stock SD card. It is incredibly low quality and it will fail randomly. But also, if for some reason you can't get the fresh install of ArcOS working, you can always go back to that SD card so you don't have a brick. 
With that said, just inserting my fresh SD card into my USB SD reader, and I'll connect it to my phone once again. If you get the file manager pop-up, just ignore it. From here, we wanna open CX File Explorer. We wanna to navigate to our downloads folder. Here it is here. And we should have an arcos.xz image. Just click on it and click extract here or extract to folder. It's entirely up to you. It did take around 20 minutes for it to fully extract on my device and it ended up counting up to 280% on the status indicator. Just something to keep in mind. Once it's finished extracting, you should have roughly an eight gig arcos.img file. If you do, then we're ready for the next step. We'll close out of this and we'll open up EdgeDroid. This is nice and simple. Just wanna click write an image. It'll automatically open up a file manager. And once again, we wanna to navigate to our downloads folder and we should have our eight gig ArcOS image. You can see here it says eight gig. Your device might be slightly different, but you should be able to see an eight gig ArcOS.img file. Just wanna tap on that. On the next screen, you can confirm it's the correct file because it should end in .img. Once we've confirmed, we wanna click grant access, click okay. And finally, we'll click write image. Just be aware you will lose everything on the SD card. So make sure it's either blank or you've backed everything up. There's no going back if you lose your files. Once you've confirmed you're ready to write, click write image. Once again, this does take a while to write, roughly 20 minutes to write and a further 10 minutes to automatically verify. We'll come back in half an hour when it's finished. Once it's finished writing, it should hopefully say image written successfully. If it does, we can close Etchdroid, swipe down from the top to safely eject our SD card. From here, we'll pop it back into our R36S and complete its initial boot setup. Just inserting the SD card into the right hand side slot, which is slot one, not the left hand side, and we'll power it on. If you get a black screen when turning it on, don't panic, it just means you need to find the correct DTB screen files. We'll cover that in the next step. It's important you do not turn it off, even if you have a black screen, and instead let it finish its initial setup. For safety, wait around five minutes before turning it back off. After a few minutes, it should have finished its initial setup and you should be on the home screen. That's pretty much all there is to installing ArcOS. All we need to do now is copy our games over. From here, we wanna turn the device off. I like to press start, go down to quit, and go down to shut down system. Once the device is turned off, we wanna remove the SD card and pop it back into our SD reader and connect that to our phone. We've connected our SD card back to our phone now. So now I think we'll go through what you have to do if you had a black screen during its initial boot. We wanna open up our file explorer once again. We wanna to navigate to the home page. just press back. From here, we wanna click on boot. Inside, we should have a folder called new screens. We wanna tap on that. Now, if you know what screen panel your device uses, which hopefully the online tool detected, you would use those panel files. If however, you're not sure and you started with panel four, then we'll just go through all the panels one by one. We'll start with panel one, just open up the folder. We wanna hold down on one of them. We wanna click select all, which is the little box on the top right. And we wanna go copy, press back once, press back again to go back to the root. We wanna scroll down a little bit just to make sure we're in the right place. And you can see all of our DTB and our boot file. So we are in the right folder and we just wanna press paste. When it asks if you wanna overwrite, make sure you click apply to all files and click overwrite. Once finished, you would safely eject your SD card once more, put it back into your R36S and power it on. If you still have a black screen, then repeat the steps once more with the next screen panel files. So if you've just started with panel one, then two, then three, and so on. If none of the panel files from the new screens folder work, then hopefully you were able to back up your stock SD's boot files. If that's the case, you wanna go back to your backup folder, which is here, and you wanna copy all the DTBs and the boot file. Just hold down. We don't wanna copy all files this time, we just wanna select all the DTBs as well as our boot file. And you'd copy that. You'd go back to your boot folder, which is here, and you'd paste it in here. Once again, overriding anything when prompted. That should hopefully fix your screen issue. If instead you've tried all of those steps and it still doesn't work, then it's possible you do in fact have a clone R36S or you have an incompatible SD card. All we have to do now is copy our ROMs over to our R36S. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, including using a second SD card. I think instead we'll keep it simple and we'll just copy our ROMs to our flash drive from our phone and then we'll put the flash drive into our R36S and transfer it over to the SD card. To do that, it's nice and simple. If your SD card is already connected to your phone, we wanna safely eject it and we can just unplug the SD card if it is connected and we'll just connect our flash drive. We'll just open CX File Explorer. It should hopefully detect our flash drive. It's the black circle with the USB icon in the middle. Let's tap on that. And here is our flash drive. I've already got Pokemon Gold on there just to test, but if you didn't, you would just copy and paste all of your ROMs over from your phone. Ideally, you would have them sorted into their own system folders. For example, put all of the Game Boy ROMs inside a Game Boy folder, Nintendo ROMs inside a Nintendo folder, and so on. This does just make it easier later, but it's not needed. Just to test, I'll copy Pokemon Gold once again, just holding down on it, pressing copy at the bottom. Go back to the homepage, 
go to our flash drive, which is called downloads for me. And I think we will create a new folder called Game Boy. So at the top right, three dots, go new, go folder. Call it Game Boy, so GB, nice and easy. Go into the Game Boy folder and press paste. Once you've copied all of your games over to your flash drive, we can close the app and safely check the flash drive. We'll move back over to our R36S now. We've just put our fresh ArcOS SD card inside our R36S and powered it on. And from here, it's gonna get my USB-C OTG adapter, plug my flash drive in that we just copied our ROMs to, and I'll plug it into the right-hand side USB-C port, which is the OTG port. At first, nothing will happen when it's connected. We have to go down to options, go down to the very bottom, USB drive mount, should fade to black, and should fade back to the menu once it's mounted. There we go. From here, we'll go back to the top. We wanna to go down to file manager. We'll keep the left-hand side our SD card, and the right-hand side, we'll navigate to our flash drive. So to do that, just press right, so the right-hand side is selected, so you can see it's orange. I'll press B once to go back to the root, go up to MNT, which is short for mount, press A, go down to USB drive, press A, and here is our flash drive. We did create a system folder for our Game Boy, so we'll go down to GB, and here are our Game Boy games. I've only got one in here, but we'll assume we've got hundreds. So I wanna press left to go to our SD card, Want to navigate to our Game Boy folder, so just press down a whole bunch. You can use L1 and R1 to skip pages. Go into our Game Boy folder, just pressing A. Once inside the folder we want to copy our ROMs to, press right to go back to our flash drive. Press Y to bring up the context menu, press A to select all, press X, and press A to copy them all over. We should now have our ROMs on the left hand side, which is our SD card. It might take a little while if you have thousands of ROMs. We can press B to go back. And you'll just do the same steps for each of your systems. So if we had Game Gear, you'd select that on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, select your Game Gear ROMs. Once you've copied all your ROMs, press Y to bring up the menu. Go down to Quit and press A. Press B to go back to the main menu. And you'll see no new systems have appeared. For that, we just have to refresh it. You can either do a full reset or just restart Emulation Station. Press Start. Go down to Quit. And just select Restart Emulation Station, the top one. Press A. And press A again. Once it's reset, all of our games should appear. So we've only copied Game Boy, but here's our Pokemon Gold. And as you can see, it does work fine. That's all there is to it. Unfortunately, there's no easy way to access our Easy Realms partition on our stock SD card on our Android phone. All of the apps which claim to be able to access multiple partitions didn't work and only saw our boot partition. If there's any interest, I will make a short video on how you can copy the ROMs from your stock SD card over to the new SD card purely on your handheld. But for that, you will need a USB hub as well as a USB keyboard and obviously a USB SD reader. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.